Hey, hey, beautiful human, thank you so much for clicking on our conversation with Sabrina Carpenter. It is a quick conversation, but we do have a lot to discuss, so please leave your honest feedback in the comment section below, and uh, like the video, and even if you hate us, please subscribe. Let's do this. Hello, beautiful human. We got Dan here, and we welcome Sabrina Carpenter. Are, you're, oh, I missed you guys. Oh. It's been a minute. It's been a long time. It, 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 it has been a uh, full minute, and I, I do miss you. I wish we were doing this in person, but for obvious reasons, not the case. Are you? Where are you? Are you home? Yes. Um. Yeah. I'm. I'm at home. I'm sick of it. I'm. Um. I really like. Didn't realize how much I need traveling and to like get out uh until until this year because I started the year in New York and I was so excited to be living in New York I was like my 20s New York it feels right um and then that was just you know yanked underneath me so but you know everything does happen for a reason you were supposed to be on Broadway mm -hmm. you were supposed to be a Mean Girls but uh universe said no <laughs> you know the universe said not for you <laughs> By the way, you look very uh, good, educated energy going on here with that map behind you. I mean, yeah, well, I'm smart, you know, so I just <laughs> wanted to to showkeze that yeah. mostly. Um, yeah. And the turtleneck. Yeah, it, it is uh, cultured and educated. Just as it's the school teacher vibes. I have glasses somewhere. I, I genuinely uh, do have reading glasses, but I never use them. But apparently I, I my left eye is not as strong as my right. So, so how do you read? How, how do you see? Just with the right. I just do that. Okay, got it. That um, Sabrina, I haven't seen your name in the news much recently. What have you been up to? I haven't either. <laughs> I've just been like staying under the radar. When did you craft Skin? When, when did that song, when did you get into the studio to write it? Um, skin, uh, which is so crazy. I mean, I was, and I've been, um, because I, you know, just newly signed with Island, and that's a, a new relationship that you guys have known me for so long now. So you know that this is kind of a, a really big change for me. Um, but I've been writing throughout the entire quarantine, and, and some of the stuff that was coming out of that was just very, very much new and personal and different for me and felt like uh, an evolution on its own. Um, so naturally, I think you know, I, I was continuing to make music um, and I was just in the studio and right place, right time, right feelings. Couldn't really avoid it or, or kind of get around it in any sort of way. The only the only way to work through something is to work through it and, and not, you know, avoid it. So um, so I just wrote kind of about what I was feeling. You've been writing for for months and months and months, like going back like March yeah, 2020? I mean, the second the second that I stopped Mean Girls, I got home and I was just like, well, oh. this is like a weird blessing in disguise. And I'm just going to I'm going to write everything I'm feeling. And at the same time, I was like, I'm going to experience everything that I need to experience because like I just turned 21. Um, you know, it's 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 a very complicated. You think you you think, you know, I thought when I was 18, 19, it was hard. And then it's just gotten crazier and crazier inside. Um, and it's been something that I'm, I'm navigating like anyone else, except the only difference is like, you're reading articles about it, you know? Well, so it, that's it, weird. It's people are reading articles, but the articles are coming from the music, the art yeah. to the listener. It feels like it's so personal and true and honest that like, yeah, people are inferring things and, and essentially yeah, drawing the whole story. That's the tough thing. And that's the tricky thing with, uh, being honest with yourself and then, you know, being honest enough to put it out into the world because you know that people are going to misinterpret it, like regardless. And I'm very, you know, aware of that. Um, and I'm sure other artists are aware of that. Like it just, it just is what it is. And, um, that's why I think it was so important for me that like skin, it, it, it really, like, I cannot stress this enough is not about one person. Like I I've, I've had so many different experiences in the last year in my personal life and in my, my career um, where there was a lot happening and I couldn't do anything about it. And I couldn't say anything because it seemed like either way people were mad at me. Um, and that's kind of essentially what I got to at this point too. I was like, wow, it seems as though I can say nothing at all, or I can say something and people will still find a reason to be mad. Um, and that is not just something that I deal with. It's something that everybody deals with in their life. So what changes that kind of 
motivates you or allows you to be honest and open and vocal? Um, I'm a Taurus. No, I don't, I don't know. Uh, I guess, I guess, no, it, it really just comes down to the point. Like what I said before, it's like, I could have tried to ignore it. I could have tried to get around it. But the fact is, is it wasn't one thing. It wasn't one thing that I was addressing. It wasn't one situation I was addressing. There were so many things that I felt the need to write something that I could remind my younger self or my past self, something I wish I could have told young Sabrina, which is that like, this is going to continue to happen and it's going to get harder and harder. It's, it's up to you to uh, choose whether you allow it to affect you. Um, or if you just tell yourself to brace through it and focus on your inner peace and your inner happiness, because everyone's out here protecting themselves. Um, I, I also think it's, it's such an interesting relationship with the internet um, and, and social media that like people will sit there and write their comment and all they're thinking about is their comment. They're not thinking about the hundreds of thousands of other comments that are also being written. And I don't think they genuinely think that we'll see them. That's the mm. other thing. I really do think that people are just, you know, they want a voice and that's great. I, I wish people would want a voice in a more positive way. Um, you know, and, and I'm kind of finding my way there too and, and finding the best way to navigate, but. I'm human. Everyone's human. And, uh, you know, again, just a songwriter writing a song. In, in your Instagram post where you said it wasn't a diss track, you said you're at the tipping point for, for many reasons. Yeah. What, what, what are those reasons then? Um, you know, I have my own, <laughs> believe it or not, there's a lot of things in here. There's a lot of things in here. Um, and, you know, I've, I've had relationships come in and out of my life in the last two years that have been like the first time that I've ever experienced some more intense relationships um, and and intense endings to those relationships as well. So that was uh, definitely something that I was navigating um, and and like the after effect of kind of not even just, you know, relationships, but friendships, like everything. And I kept finding myself kind of having to like silence the way that I was feeling or just like I said, like, you know, keep brushing it under the rug and moving past it because I think people expect me to not get involved. Um, and that's something that I've, I've done for a really long time or I've, I've tried to for a long time. Um, but there's just no, like I said, there's just no pleasing everybody. So um, I try, I tried to do what would feel best and most honest to myself. Um, that's where we got to. The music is more honest, and, and I feel like that just from skin, I'm assuming that that, like, in a certain way lays kind of a foundation for what's to come. Would you say honesty is that? Yeah, I mean, it's funny, though. Like, I wrote a song about getting sued after I got sued. Like, it's people are surprised, which makes me surprised. You know what I mean? Like, in different situations, but I was at different points in my life. I wrote a song called Exhale when I was also dealing with a time where my mental health was just not it, Chief. You know what I mean? And so I'm, like, at this place now where this was a common theme in my life, you know? And, and just, like, I guess the concept of people getting under your skin was something that I liked because uh, it felt like a concept that people might hear a title skin and think it's a different song than what it actually is. And um, as a songwriter, that's always like, you know, ear candy. Um, and I liked that. And, um, and again, you know, I feel like it was an exciting moment for me to just be able to really, really tackle what I was like. It's really exciting when you can be, you know, writing exactly what you're experiencing in that moment because most of the time we're writing we're like oh well last week this happened or like I'm you know picturing this this kind of song where it's this fantasy world about this and like that's always fun but it's just really special and, and different when when it's exactly what's happening to you so from session to finished product how long did it take you to create skin huh. um I would say session to finish product. I worked on it for a couple of days. I mean, I wrote the song in one day, but I, I then went back and kind of worked on it production wise and um, lyrically a little bit. Uh, and kind of everything was happening at once. You know, it was, it was the song, it was the mix, it was the master, it was the video, it was, mm -hmm. it was everything, um, which was a new experience for me. I had a lot of respect for the way that Taylor Swift put out you know, her albums this year. And um, she like wrote when she put out folklore, she was like, yeah, I mean, 
we're living in such uncertain times right now that it's like, you just don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. So you might as well just like do what you feel in the moment. Um, and this was kind of one of those situations where I felt inspired to do that. So thanks, Tay Tay. Why was it important for you to reference the blonde lyric in your song? Uh, because I guess people care. And I was like curious as to why people cared. Um, but I also think, again, it's like people are pointing fingers, but at the same time, like, it's not for me to say, you know, uh, who, who is, or it isn't about, cause it's not, it's not my story. That's not my narrative. I'm just approaching it from, you know, again, the, the attention that people kind of directed towards me, assuming that, you know, it, it was me that I was just like, well, you know, it does, uh, it does make sense. I am blonde, you know? Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I think I came at it from, from a very honest place of saying like, I don't think anyone meant any hard feelings and I, I don't think that that's what it is about. We're all just telling our truth and we're all just trying to um, feel okay within our own situations, which are so unique because we're all experiencing life from completely different perspectives at different points in our life with different people surrounding us. Um, and my situation is not one that everyone's going through. So I understand that, you know, some people won't see it from, from that side of things and that's okay. What lyrics started the song? I mean, maybe we could have been friends. I, I, I always thought that, you know? Um, I think that that's it's also, I think one of my favorite lyrics in the song is, you know, maybe we can pretend there's no gravity in the words we write. I think a lot of people have like tried to, uh, again, like people misinterpret and that's completely fine. But like, I was very, you know, I thought about it when I was writing it um, and, and saying, you know, maybe we can pretend there's no gravity is, saying there, there's a lot of weight in words, um, even though sometimes we don't treat it as such, uh, but, there, but there really is, and, and they're powerful, and they can do a lot to people, um, and in a good way, in a bad way. Um, so I was on the receiving end of the bad way, uh, which a lot of people have been there, maybe not in the same way that I was at the time, but they've been there in their own ways. So hopefully there's something for people to take away from it, regardless of their situation. I think, uh, it's an overall, the theme of the song is something, especially in this year, we're all going through our own struggles, facing our own inner demons, facing things from the outside world um, that are infecting us internally um, that we kind of have to keep reminding ourselves is just, it's a temporary thing. And, you know, they can't get under your skin if you don't let them. Do you still think you can be friends? Uh, I mean, I'm absolutely always 100%, like, you talk to me. Uh, of course. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, you know, and if, if anyone talks to me, I think they would know that. Uh, and, and I, it's so hard. Cause like in songs and in videos, like you come across this like glossy, like not human being. Uh, and even in a song where you can be so like open and blunt and vulnerable, people still don't see you as a human. So yeah, I mean, anything is possible. Absolutely. As much as the situation probably sucked, and I'm sure you didn't like getting all the hate, do you think in a certain way, though, it was kind of good good for your career? It brought a lot more eyes to your music? Because this is know, Serena man. Carpenter earns her first ever Hot 100 entry with Skin debuting at number 48 this week. That's very exciting. I'm very, I'm very grateful that people uh, are listening. I mean, again, like you guys know, all I've ever just wanted to do is sing and perform and entertain, make people feel something. So um, they're feeling something right now. <laughs> I don't know what they're feeling exactly, um, but but they're feeling something. And, and I think that that's important. Art, art is always controversial and it always has been, um, you know, and, and sometimes I'm a part of that and sometimes I'm not. Um, I'm, I'm just grateful. Obviously, there's a reason everything's happening the way that it is right now. So I'm just trying to keep that in check. We're talking about everybody else's takeaway from the song, but what is your takeaway? What do you learn from it now that it, from, from, now that it's out there, that now that it's made? How, how do you grow? I think I grow by um, kind of ex accepting what what I just said, which is essentially like there's there's a bigger reason for all of this. I mean, there's there's lessons that I don't I'm not even aware of yet, um, and things that I am currently like actively as today and tomorrow dealing with as a person and as a young person at that who definitely doesn't have it all figured out um but it is it's that constant reminder to just keep skin as thick as I can because you know it, I've through all the 
through all the pain and through all the struggle that that has happened, um, I've also experienced a lot of happiness and a lot of like pure like joy and love and um, it's something that I I hope to find more of. You know, Sabrina, I do have to say you're so good at answering questions without answering questions. Did you see a TikTok? I don't. I saw I saw a TikTok TikTok. where someone compiled our last interview. It was just moments where you asked me questions and I did not answer them. (laughs) You do it every time. Every time I'm sitting here listening to you answer questions, I'm like, I don't think you're really saying anything. You're talking, but I don't know how much. That hurts. That hurts because I do feel like I'm saying things if you're paying attention. Yeah. Um, Maybe I'm not saying the things you want me to say because I, I do think a lot of people like they want me to start. I'm not out here to start. I'm okay, just, maybe I didn't mean that you're not saying anything, but you're you're, you're like you're not at, saying anything juicy. There's no there's no headlines for me. You, no, <laughs> you're very good at dancing around it. It's you're very good at it. It's uh, take it's skill. It takes skill. You're very kind. How, how many songs do we have done, and what's next? An EP or an album? What's the plan? Everything's in the works right now, but I, I am figuring it out, and I want it. I want it to be, um, you know, a, as good as I think it can be. And I'm, I'm. Uh, there's a lot that I'm really excited about, though, I will say. And I, and I dropped a couple of Easter eggs in my music video. So Yeah, what's we'll happening April 23rd, 2021? I don't know what you're saying. <laughs> oh, yeah, you don't? I don't. I don't. I will say some of those Easter eggs were um, on purpose, and some of those were not. <laughs> mm, okay, okay. okay. But that's, that's what's fun. It's like a game of Blue's Clues. You keep them speculating, you know? Okay, Dan, one more question. Do you have anything? I have a lot of questions. No. (laughs) We can text afterwards. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) What? Do you want can we get one more? Do you have one more question? Are you is there (laughs) Are you sure? I feel terrible. No, don't Can you tell us a little bit about this modern twist on Alice? Oh, um, yes. I, I I pitched this project that's like my dream project over Zoom during quarantine to different studios and, and Netflix. Um, Netflix was the perfect home for it, but I'm like the biggest Alice in Wonderland fan. And it's it's basically a modern day musical, but Wonderland is a music oh. festival. Um, so it's, all you know, all the artists are all your beloved characters, but it's very new and very different. And uh, I'm... I'm so excited. Sabrina Carpenter, I, I appreciate you. I thank you for appreciate taking the time. You. Always. Have an amazing day. Uh, you guys. Peace and love. Peace and love. We'll talk to you soon. Thank you. Bye. Bye.